Hello again everybody. Just wanted to take a few minutes and answer some of the questions and comments I've had regarding the first video I made on these guns. There's been quite a bit of talk and I've had quite a few uh, PMs and messages, emails, so forth, and then comments in the first video regarding some of the things that we covered in the first one. And I know this gun a little better now that I've had it a few days and had the chance to shoot it, so I'd like to cover some of those and answer a couple of quick questions. Uh, not meant to be comprehensive, but hopefully we can and answer some of the questions that you've had. First one, how did this little M&P shield shoot? I put about oh three to four hundred rounds of cheap uh, you know federal and cheap uh, S&B ammo through it and it worked just perfectly. No hitches and no nothing of note. It was uh, perfectly reliable uh, very accurate, just as accurate as I am, which uh, some days is good and some days is bad, but just as accurate as any of my other handguns, and it was a treat to shoot. I also ran about uh, two boxes of some hot Fiocchi Plus P stuff through it to see how it would handle that. It handled it great. It shot every round perfectly. Uh, again, you know, I couldn't really even tell the difference between the hot Fiocchi stuff and the, the Tamer stuff, the Federal or the uh, S&B, so I was very impressed with how this little gun shot and handled. I brought the PPS to the range, actually out to the desert with me as well, and shot, you know, I only shot a couple magazines through it because I had shot the shield first and then I picked up my PPS, which has been my go-to carry gun for the last couple of months, and it just wasn't as good for me. Now that might be different for you, but for me it just didn't feel as good. The trigger especially was gritty, didn't feel it didn't feel nearly as good, the reset and the take up and so forth, and it just wasn't as comfortable. And you know, the um, there's a few things about the little PPS that are different, and some people love it and some people don't. I was going to have to train myself to get used to the, uh, the magazine drop here, which is different on these German style guns on some of them, and that's fine, I, that's a training issue. But I hadn't quite uh, warmed up to it yet, and there was a few other things. The, the hinge trigger, reminiscent of what Glock brings to the table, it just wasn't as comfortable. Uh, the grip itself wasn't as comfortable and it just wasn't as fun to shoot is the bottom line. I would much rather shoot the shield. So I shot the shield a couple hundred more rounds and I loved every minute of it. A great little gun. Um, you know I was breaking clay pigeons out at 20 and 25 yards so it is every bit as accurate as you need to be especially for a concealed weapon. Uh, a couple of the other questions or things that I uh, forgot to touch on or didn't touch on very well in the first video is comparing apples to apples, all of these magazines with flush mags, or excuse me, all these pistols with flush mags. Now, the Walther PPS with a flush mag holds six rounds. I've also got a seven and an eight round magazine, uh, but it holds six with the flush uh, magazine. The M&P Shield holds seven with a flush magazine, so you get one more round. Now let me show you how they stack up, literally. Let's see if I can show you. Uh, get that on camera right. They're just about the same. Um, I think that little bit of offset in the shield gives it the capability to hold that one extra round. And it really doesn't feel thicker. It might be just a hair thicker in the, in the grip here, but it doesn't feel thicker. Feels great. Um, same basic style and shape, but uh, when you line up the bottom of those magazines flush, it is just about sixes. So you got seven in one and six in the other. Six in the PPS, seven in the M&P. Okay, so uh, bring in the Glock here for just uh, demonstrative purposes. Got the flush magazine in that, and let me grab the M&P shield. You can see how much shorter it is. The flush or the flush magazine in each one of these, uh, ten in the Glock 26, and seven in the M&P Shield. The Glock is much fatter, and I'll, uh, you know, <laughs> much comparatively speaking, for a defensive handgun for concealed carry, um, it's just a little bit wider, but it makes a big difference. And I'll show you the uh, holsters that I've got here in just a second, and and you can uh, see how that plays out when you're wearing it. <clears throat> uh, so let me bring these holsters in real quick and show you. 
This is, I don't have exactly the same holster, but I've got two similar holsters. This is the Galco King Tuck, uh, a holster that I really like. I carry my Glocks in it quite a bit, either a Glock 19 or Glock 20, or the 26. So when you've got the 26 in there, you can see uh, it's, it's fairly tall. You've got your belt loops here, and it comes out over the barrel of the gun, over the action, and into the other side. Now let me show you compared with, this is a compact Minotaur and I understand that it's a different holster and it's put together a little differently, but uh, just so you can see, the top line of this is much slimmer. This is for the PPS. Uh, it's constructed a little bit more, a little different than the Galco holster in that the, the Kydex is tucked under this leather, so it's not uh, apples to apples, but if I compare them, you can see the top line of that Glock versus the top line of the holster on the on the PPS. Now this PPS holster fits in there nice and snug. Great holster by the way, I love it. Um, but when you compare the two, let's see if I'm getting enough light, you really can tell a big difference when you're carrying one of these slimmer pistols, a single stack 9mm versus the double stack. It does make a difference and it is more comfortable. Um, that's why I started carrying this PPS over the Glock 26. So uh, I'll show you some, let me show you something that's also pretty interesting is the, uh, the shield fits in this fairly well. You know, and I emailed the guys at Comtac and said, hey, when can we get a, uh, the Kydex portion of this holster built for the shield because this gun's going to be very popular. And they said, well, you know, we keep track of requests. We don't have it yet. We're just making sure that it's not just another fad in the uh, firearms industry and I can guarantee that it's not going to be a fad. So the more of you pipe up and send them your email saying, hey, let's get a holster built for this shield, uh, they'll get on it. Uh, but you can see how slim that is. It doesn't fit as well as the PPS, obviously. It's not molded for it. And I'm not even sure I'm going to carry it in this just because it doesn't have quite the lockup that the PPS has. I'll continue with the PPS until I get a better holster for that uh, M&P shield but it is a great way to carry and a very very nice package with that slim line and a good leather belt I got mine from the belt man it it's uh, you forget about it you, you hear that a lot but you really will forget about this gun uh, very comfortable to carry even in the car and that's uh, basically the uh, function of the thinness of the gun and the holster so whichever one of these you prefer you're going to have a, a great time great success carrying it with that that type of a holster Okay, back to a couple of the other questions I had. Uh, magazine cost. I, would, I did speak correctly when I said the PPS, 50 bucks for each one of those magazines. That's a big drawback. And this gun, you know, like the HKs and some of the other German guns, they de demand a premium. I got mine on sale for 450 so it was actually the same price as I paid for this M&P. But usually you're going to be looking at five or six or sometimes $700 for a PPS. With magazines, when it only comes with one at $50 each, that's an expensive gun and you pay a premium. It does have the replaceable back strap. It's got a cocked indicator there in the back, which the MMP doesn't. Um, both things that you may or may not like. Uh, and the different style safety. Uh, a little bit different styling. The, uh, the slide release. Uh, great gun. Love it. Um, you know, it's like a slimmer version of a Glock, but. Um, I like the MMP better. <clears throat> so, um, there were some questions about the back straps on these. Uh, they are not replaceable. It just comes with that stock strap, which is fine with me. You know, I, I really don't mess with the back straps too much. Uh, on the Gen 4 Glocks, I leave them how they are, and this one is, uh, fits just fine. Um, you know, you might want to build that up a little bit or put some of those a talon grip on it or some, some sticky tape, which I might do. The talon has a new rubber, rubberized finish on some of theirs that is a great addition. But uh, just out of the box, that one feels very comfortable. <clears throat> so I think hopefully that would uh, answer a lot of your questions. You know, I've carried quite a few different concealed guns uh, or concealed firearms over the last... 10 years, I've had a couple of M&P9s, or M&P9s, PM9s rather, uh, SIG 238, Glocks, uh, what were some of the other ones? I've had a handful, but this is my favorite by far, so far. 
and I'm uh, really looking forward to being able to get a good uh, version of this holster, either the Minotaur or the uh, Crossbreed or the Galco, something that I can start carrying this on a daily basis. Uh, great little gun. I'm sure you'll like it. I know I sound like an advertisement for uh, Smith & Wesson, <laughs> but, but uh, I can assure you that's not the case. This has just been my, uh, my favorite, best bargain concealed carry weapon so far. So thanks and uh, have a great day, guys.